Welcome to the pond at the Alder for Owenschlager Wildlife Sanctuary. This pond will serve as the focus of today's pond study. Organisms in this study represent residents and visitors of ponds across Medina County Park District. Now before we begin our study, it is important to understand what a pond is. The difference between lakes, ponds, and wetlands can be confusing. Lakes are generally bigger than ponds, but these rules do not always apply. Ponds are usually deeper than wetlands, but sometimes ponds are shallow. So, a body of water that is shallower than a lake and deeper than a wetland is usually considered a pond. Because a pond is not very deep, there are often shallow areas along the edges where plants can be seen growing up through the water. While the habitat is less complex, it is still an important place for many organisms, both big and small. Follow along for a study of both microscopic and macroscopic life found in ponds in Medina County Park District. Microorganisms or microscopic life are so small that they cannot be seen with the naked eye. This means that when they live in water, they cannot be seen without tools like a microscope. Using the sample of water taken from the pond, our naturalists will prepare slides allowing us to see this life. Here is naturalist Nicole at the microscope, ready to help us find the microscopic organisms. In order to do this, several steps must be taken to prepare the slides. She will first prepare the tubes by filling them with water collected at the pond. This is most easily done using a pipette. Next, the tubes will be capped and put into the centrifuge, which will be cranked and spun in order to draw the organisms down into the thin parts of the tubes, making observations even easier. Then the tubes will be placed into these slides, which will be placed onto the microscope for observation. Once the slide is prepared and in the microscope, adjustments will need to be made to the lens and focus to produce a clearer image. Okay, now that the slide is prepared and the microscope is in focus, what microscopic life is in the water? This is called Spirogyra, and it is a type of green algae. The name Spirogyra comes from the spiral arrangement of cells. It is kind of like a slinky that you stretch out. Algae converts sunlight to produce sugars for energy. This process is called photosynthesis. Clostarium is another type of green algae. Unlike Spirogyra, which is filamentous or thread-like, Clostarium is unicellular, meaning it has one cell. This looks like a green banana or a smiley face. This is called Volbox, another type of green algae. It differs from Spirogyra and Clostarium in that it is circular in shape. It rolls around like a beach ball. Protozoa with cilia are unicellular organisms as well. They have to find their own food because they cannot make their own energy like algae can. They have cilia around their body that acts like oars on a boat that helps them swim around in the water. They're kind of like a surfboard surfing around in the water. The rotifers are commonly called wheel animals. They are multicellular organisms. They have cilia, or hair-like structures, at one end of the animal arranged in a circle. The cilia draws a vortex of water along with food in the mouth. They feed like a vacuum cleaner. Watch this demonstration. Just kidding, they don't sound like a vacuum. This is a water flea. Oh, I'm starting to itch. Actually, they are crustaceans, like lobsters and crayfish, and not fleas. However, they do resemble the movements of fleas. Most water fleas swim by using their antenna. You can see the internal organs of a water flea. This is the simple eye, and here is the compound eye. Right here are the intestines. You can tell what they had for breakfast, which is mostly algae. The two circles above are eggs. The legs are moving, and they have pads on their legs that act as gills. They breathe out of their legs? That's strange. Lastly, you can see the heart beating. The young cyclops is similar to the water flea in that they are both crustaceans. But cyclops are more specifically copepods, which get their name from the oar or paddle-like movement which is made by the antenna or appendages. What makes the cyclops interesting is like the cyclops in stories, it has one eye. These microscopic organisms are the foundation for the food chain that supports the entire pond. 
thus making them a vital part of the larger aquatic ecosystem. Let's take a visit to the pond and see what animals are living here that are large enough to observe without a microscope. Exploring pond life is fun and easy. A gentle scoop with an aquatic net almost to the bottom of the pond is where we are going to find a lot of macro invertebrates. If you scoop too deeply, you might get a big scoop of stinky pond muck. These animals live in the debris that is made of mostly plant material and algae. Gently look through the debris. These animals are small and often dark in color, so look carefully. Some are surprisingly fast out of water, like this beetle. Hey, get back here beetle, slow down! Use a container with pond water in it as a space to observe your findings. These animals live in water, so we want to move them into the bin as soon as we can. This shelled creature is a freshwater snail. Snails and their relatives, the slugs, are in a group called gastropods. The shell is attached and they cannot leave it. Their head and a large muscular body part, called a foot, can emerge from the opening of the shell. Most have rough, rasping mouth parts designed to eat living or decaying algae and plant material. In the middle here is a dragonfly nymph which is a juvenile dragonfly. As nymphs, they live in water and are predators to many of the invertebrates we've discussed. They undergo several stages of growth, called instars, before their final metamorphic transformation into adult dragonflies. Their metamorphosis is an incomplete metamorphosis. Unlike butterflies, which go through complete metamorphosis, the dragonflies will undergo transformation without a pupa or chrysalis. Adults have wings and will spend their adult days out of the water. Let's take another scoop and see what else we can find. Water boatmen are in the order Hemiptera and are true bugs, not beetles. Look closely. They hold a silvery bubble of air close to their body that enables the insect to stay underwater for a period of time. They swim by moving their long legs to steer and propel them in the water. Their name comes from the legs resemblance to oars from a boat. Giant water bugs are another true bug. They use their piercing mouth parts very differently than the water boatmen. As ambush predators, they lurk in fresh water waiting for prey. They will eat a large variety, including tadpoles, small fish, and invertebrates. They will grasp their prey with their large front legs and then inject it with venomous digestive saliva. The prey will break down and begin to liquefy. Then the giant water bug will suck up the liquefied remains with its straw-like mouth part. Like the water boatmen, giant water bugs also bring a bubble of air with them into the water. A spider that can walk on water! That might sound like something from a science fiction movie, but the six-spotted fishing spider is real and lives right here in Ohio. They have many additional adaptations for living near ponds and wetlands. These spiders can make silk, but they do not construct webs to catch their prey. They will go for a more direct capture. They can also dive up to seven inches below the surface. Short, water-repellent hairs covering their body hold a layer of air when it submerges. This is one adaptation that helps them remain underwater for up to 30 minutes. Fishing spiders also hunt on shorelines and can jump in the air to catch prey. There are many species of frogs and toads in Ohio. A frog's life cycle begins in spring as eggs laid in the water. An egg mass has hundreds of jelly-like eggs. The eggs will hatch legless tadpoles. Tadpoles are mostly herbivorous and will spend several months, up to a few years, eating and storing energy. The amount of time depends on the species and resources available. Watch out, tadpoles! Those giant water bugs might think you're a tasty meal. When the time comes, the frog will undergo metamorphosis, growing back legs, front legs, and lungs. As an adult, 
Frogs are carnivorous and will spend time both in and out of the water. If you visit a pond on a sunny day, you're likely to see turtles basking in the sun like this painted turtle. Basking is a common behavior in reptiles. Turtles and all reptiles are cold-blooded, also called ectothermic, meaning that they cannot regulate their body temperature internally. The turtle is basking in the warm sun to raise its body temperature. Mallard ducks are common in Ohio. This species is the main ancestor of most breeds of domesticated ducks. The male and female adults look different. The males have a shiny green head, a white line on their neck, and gray on their wings and belly. The female is comparatively drab with a brown head and mottled brown all over. They both have a blue-black band of feathers on their wings. They both make a noise very stereotypically associated with ducks. Quack. Though the male sounds deeper. Quack. No, no, that's probably not it. Thank you for joining us for this pond study. Ponds make up an important part of our ecosystems in Ohio. Maybe you can find similar creatures in your backyard, schoolyard, and local parks.